Hi besties, thanks for joining me today for a watercolor tutorial. We're continuing with Mermay. That's hashtag Mermay on social media. Today we're going to be focusing on mer hair. This is very wispy hair with lots of uh, color. This particular time we're going to be doing blue, but you can use any color set that you have. You can do pinks, purples, just make it bright and cool. You could do uh, like red hair, like the Little Mermaid, um, but do have a light, a dark, and a medium tone so you can get all these different highlights, shadows, and your overall hair color. So let's get started. Let's go over the step-by-step -step sheet and the color palette. You can get a download to trace onto your watercolor paper at TammyAnnCreative.com. Regular printer paper won't do. It won't be able to take the amount of water you need. I'll go over all the supplies here soon. The three main colors we're going to use are Seaside, Blue Whale, and Ocean from the Prima Marketing set. First off, we're going to wash the whole hair area with Seaside. Then we're going to go over the lines with this Zig Rider. Then we're going to add in the medium tone Ocean. And in step three, we're going to use Blue Whale for the darkest darks. They're going to wash in uh, number four. We're going to do a light wash of the metallic blue. And we're going to add in some highlights with the silver. If you don't have watercolor metallics, you can add iridescent medium to your regular paints and get a similar look. Many different companies actually make that and I'm using the Windsor Newton one and it works really well. These are really cool. They're from the premium marketing set of metallics. I'm also going to be using a Signo Uniball pen. This is a gel pen for doing highlights as well. I'm going to go in a little bit more in depth here on the art supplies. You'll need one large brush, one medium brush with fine tips. You'll need that watercolor paper, 140 pound, 300 G. I use the Canson XL. It's very inexpensive and it works great. I also use the blue Zig Memory dual tip pen for this particular project and the Uniball UM153 Signo broad point gel pen. I'll leave uh, in the comments a link to your different supplies. I also use watercolors in here, the Art Philosophy set currents, and I'm using Seaside, Blue, Whale, and Ocean for this project, as well as the metallic set from the same company. And I'm using the blue and pearl colors in this project. Use what you have on hand and let's get started. For best results, do use professional grade watercolors. If you haven't already downloaded the hair sheet, you can get that at tamiancreative.com. A link will be in the description. Use transfer paper, a light box, or a window to transfer that onto your watercolor paper. First off, get your seaside color ready. That's your lightest tone and you're going to wash the whole hair area. Paying particular attention to the base. You want those little thready sections so you get lots of movement. So I'm gonna use the large brush for most of this and then I think I'll use a smaller brush for the smaller pieces of hair. I'll use the big brush as long as I can because I've got so much area to cover. So you're using a lot of water to paint here. And you're covering the full area. Take your time, there's lots of little hairs down here. Keep 
keep in the lines as much as you can, but if you make any mistakes, that's okay. You're gonna be using that zig liner to outline stuff. And we're going to be adding those darker colors later on, so you'll be able to fix any areas. On the curl on the right, there's two little spaces that I've kept white. I've accidentally colored in one of them, so I'm going to get a little piece of a paper towel and I'm going to blot that. I'm gonna get rid of some of that paint there and bring that white right back in there and then I'm going to go around it. Give it that contrast so you can see that this is the curl and that's the area that's just white behind. I'm just doing a little bit of a touch up here. That's a little tip, just use lots of little pieces of paper towel to Get those little white spots back if you accidentally hit one. This is when the small brush comes in handy. Just keep working on that hair and get it all done. Going back to the big brush going to reactivate any of those areas that are started to dry. It's going to happen when you have a larger piece like that. So I'm just trying to get a basic wash. Some gradation is fine. This is really just uh, your base that you're not going to fully see later on. I'm now going to work with a smaller brush, still fine tipped to do all those little curls at the base.
The storms we chase are leading us, and love is all we'll ever trust. Yeah, no, I don't wanna waste what's left. And on and on we'll go through the wastelands, through the highways, till my shadow turns to sun rays. And on I'm now going to switch back to the larger brush to just merge everything a little bit more and get it more even. One more basic wash on top, just because some areas have, are still wet and some are dry and I just wanted a little bit more even. As you add water and paint again, this is going to activate and merge together. Just take your time, feel free to pause as you need to, go at your own pace. If you find that I'm going quicker than you, just let the uh, video go, then you can come back. Just rewind, that's what's cool about these videos, is you can go at your own pace, just keep listening to the music, and then rewind as you need to. Or you can pause if you like to do that. I personally like to just continue to listen to the music and not get out of the element and then just come back as I need.
After this, we're going to let it all dry. I'm gonna get a snack and some tea. And you can either let it dry just naturally or let it dry just a little bit and then use a hair dryer to speed the last bit up. But don't hit the, uh, the paint and water with a hair dryer too early or you're gonna have that water just spray all over and you ruin your piece. Give it a few minutes to just seep into the paper. Please pause the video now and I'll be here when you're ready for step two. Let that all dry. Okay, mine's all dry now. I'm going to be using this Zig Writer. It's a permanent marker. One side's got a bullet nib and the other one's got this very small like tip. So you're gonna use the small tip on this particular project. So go down each section and you're gonna do the whole outline. Go at your own pace, and I'll be here when you're done with this step. Just go along with the paint. If you're out of the lines, go where the paint is. All those lines in the background are gonna disappear here as you add additional color.
The storms we chase are leading us, and love is all we'll ever trust. Yeah, no, I don't want to waste what's left. And on and on we'll go through the wastelands, through the highways, till my shadow turns to sun rays. And on
Okay, it's time for the next step. We're gonna get that smaller brush. It's got a very fine tip. And you're going to use the ocean color. That's your medium. And you're going to be adding some medium to the hair. So get some water and that medium paint. And you're going to be dabbing it through the hair. Focus on those areas where you know that there's going to be shadows and don't cover the whole hair. So you want those lights to still be visible as well. So you can see here I'm going in where this particular piece of hair is on top of the other piece of hair. So you're doing that under section. Hair has a lot of different colors and textures and highlights and that's how you get that sense of movement and texture and layering. So I'm doing here, there's a piece of hair that goes over that. So I'm doing it darker right where they match. And then I'm going to blend it into the area below and make sure that you don't cover the full. So you want those highlight areas where it bumps up to still be visible. you're going to be covering probably I'd say about 65-70% of the hair. Keeping those highlights. Once we're done with this we're going to let it dry and then we're going to add in the darkest darks with the blue whale color. So go at your own pace. I'm not doing this to full true life. I'm just trying to give the imagination of that look where you see the highlights and the depths. This is more of an illustrative style. It's not realism. So just keep finding those areas that you think look to be at the darkest areas or those mid-tone areas. And you're gonna fill all those in. You can see here on the curl, I'm keeping that center section lighter. And I'm coming in underneath there where the shadow will be as it curves and curls. See where that curl bumps out? That's gonna stay white. Or in this case, seaside, the lightest color.
Okay, let's let this all dry, get our snacks and drinks. Remember, you can use a hair dryer, but let it uh, dry just a little bit first. Make sure you don't have any standing water. With these longer projects with multiple like drying times, I'll use a hair dryer just to speed everything up. Okay, please pause the video and come back. I'll be here for you. Okay, mine's dry, and I'm going to mix up some of that blue whale, the darkest dark. We're going to use that same brush, and we're going to go into those darkest areas. Those are going to be the areas where the hair comes over another piece, and it's just the upper, like, third portion of, like, under where there's, like, a little V. Oh, yeah, I got these um, new little bottles. I uh, talked about them in one of my other videos that I had them on order. So I got them in, and I'm putting the iridescent medium into the little bottle so I can uh, mix these easier. So if you don't have metallics, you can create your own with that iridescent medium. You just mix it with your paints. I'm just getting a little bit of water on the paper, making sure my brush is all ready. And then I'm gonna add that darkest dark, the whale blue color. I'm just pointing out some of the areas that you'll want to be looking towards. There's the blue whale. And you want this fairly dark. You want to get that contrast. That's what makes it look like pieces are popping, things are on top, things are in back. When you have that extra contrast. So I'm just going along some of these edges, those upper V little areas where another hair is very visibly curling over in another piece. So with the last color you did about 60 to 70% of the hair, with this color you're gonna do more like 30%. And it's gonna start to come to life with this additional hue. Make sure you keep those lightest light areas and you're just covering a portion of those medium areas. Blue is one of my favorite colors, so I was very excited to do this in blue. here really dark. This piece of hair is at the lower area and it's definitely being covered up and casting a shadow uh, or getting a shadow cast on it 
from that piece of hair that's coming across it. I'm going to blend it in a little bit, going down. So just go through your hair, finding those little areas you think should be the darkest dark areas. I'm coming in here even darker so that's less water to paint making sure we have lots of contrast see up here on the curl it's going to be dark in those areas where the curl is curving in and going on top of the other piece Trust, yeah. No, I don't want to waste what's left. 
go even darker in the darkest areas again so I'm gonna get more paint and it's more paint to water so you're getting those darker areas I'm just dabbing it into those creases in where I need to getting lots of texture and tone so I'm getting about to 30% here I think it needs a bit more here in the center and more over there to the left areas till you feel like you have the right percentage of dark to light to medium. I always find that I feel like I don't have enough darkest dark so I'm trying hard to add in additional ones in my work. Sometimes you don't think that you actually see the contrasts, but you'll come back later and you'll say, oh, I wish I think, I think I would have added, or this would be better if I would have added more dark and more contrast. When you're actually doing the work, you sometimes just don't see it. And I think as I continue, I'll get better at that, but Getting that contrast in there can sometimes be hard because you feel like you might be overdoing it. 
And in my case, I find like I come back later on and I feel like I just didn't do enough. So I'm trying to push myself in that. And with watercolors, they do oftentimes get a lot lighter as they dry. So sometimes you'll want to like touch it up and keep adding, let it dry a little bit, see where it's going. Adding in quite a bit darker darks right in here, and blending them in. And I'm working here on the left. And I just keep going back over all the different sections. As you do one section, another section might catch your eye. You just keep blending and finding the right balance. Feel free to add in a bit of that medium tone too if you feel like you want to just blend everything. You can use that medium tone to help blend out the darkest dark areas into the mid-tones. So I'm just adding a little bit of that mid-tone and water and just touching up the different areas. Once we're done here, it'll be time to let this dry before we move on to the next step. That's tea time and snack time. Please pause here. I'll be ready for you when yours is fully dry. Okay, mine's dry and it's time to add in some bling. I'm going to be adding in that blue metallic and that pearl metallic. Here's the little sheet, so we're going to be doing that last bit. And then we're going to use a white gel pen to do additional highlights. I'm using the Signo ballpoint pen. I'm going to do a wash of the blue first. I'm adding it quite a bit in right here. Might have gone a little bit too much. So I'm going to add some water and really move that around. You can see how it glistens there, those little sparkles. To get that metallic all over the hair, you can use some paper towel to dot it a little bit if it gets too thick. Really just want it to be thick enough on there that it sparkles. It's a little hard to see here in the video, but there's lots of sparkle. So if you're working on this project, you'll really see it too. And what this, using the blue, it's very similar to the other colors. It's blending it all together. So you're getting both the sparkle and the texture of the paints activating just a little bit. 
so that they run into each other just a tad and become a little more smooth, the transitions. I think this sort of like this is a mermaid and her hair reminds me of the sea you have the waves and you have the deeper and the lighter areas her hair speaks of the sea that's sort of what I was thinking We're just about finished here with the blue and we're going to move on to adding some of that pearly white in. And that's gonna give even uh, like big highlights. So you're gonna wanna use that area, that color in the highlight type areas. Oops. Got out of control there, okay. Adding that pearlish silver in here. Go in just a little, um, doing little ta tags. <laughs> you don't wanna do too much too quick. You wanna get a feel for the medium and how dark it is and how much you have on your brush. I'm using quite a bit here up at the crown. So the sun's really hitting her right there. And then as the hair moves, and you see those little bumpage areas, that's where you wanna give a little bit extra of that highlight. It really makes that hair look like it's moving. to do as little or as much of this as you want. Make it your own. And when you're done, make sure you sign your piece. This is yours. Congratulations on finishing here. It's been a, a long piece. So this year's mermaid project for me is four pieces. I did the hair, a tail, some scales, and a trident. So all those should be available. So you can find a list of those here on my YouTube channel or Rumble. I'm gonna be uploading this to a few different networks. So if you've enjoyed this tutorial or just watching it or actually doing it, please give me a thumbs up, click that notification bell on YouTube or a notification on Rumble or whatever network you're on. I would love to have you back for more tutorials. Please leave me a comment. I'm always looking to hear about what you liked about a tutorial, what could be changed and what you're looking forward to painting or even coloring, because I also do coloring pages. Are there any mediums you'd be interested in learning about in the watercolor area? I also do a little bit of acrylic and gauche. Not really so much into oils. I don't want anything that is too smelly.
Okay, we're really coming in here with lots of little silver dots of area where it's just going bling. So looking a little bit more of like that fish look, like the scales, but it's also it's hair. And it's mer hair. So let's let this dry and then we're going to come in with that white gel pen for additional highlights. Time to pause and when yours is dry, come back and let's do those extra highlights in white. Okay, mine's all dry and I'm coming in here with the white gel pen now. I'm just giving it some curves and some highlights. So I'm trying to find those areas where you see the curvatures. and give it that extra bit of movement. In some areas, it's a little hard to see it on the video as I do it on top of the, uh, like the area where I have the metallics, but it is visible here. It's just more visible on camera in those areas that are the darkest areas. Give it, move it like the waves. It's got motion. It's alive. If you're an author, feel free to look at this hair and think of a character you could write. I'm a reader and I would love for any authors out there to feel free to take any of my art and use it as an inspiration piece. Maybe you're writing a mermaid book or some fantasy or paranormal. It's actually my favorite genre. I love paranormal romance. I would love for this to be inspiration for some character. about finished up here please make sure to click that notification bell the like button and leave me a comment it's been so great having you over Okay, let's just move this up here. I'm going to be working on just blending a little bit more here. And then we're going to paint in the words mermaid. Cause this is mermaid, hashtag mermaid on social media. And I'm gonna be hashtagging that. And if you're doing any other like mermaid themed items in May, hashtag them mermaid and other artists will see them out there. 
and it's just a fun way to celebrate mermaids and keep them in the public sphere.
Thanks again. It's been great having you. See you again soon. Bye.